If you're a new artist that is fighting for the independence of all artists out there, then chances are you want to stay out of the way of the major labels. And I understand your position, but there is a new deal that is lurking about in the shadows that you should be known about and that you shouldn't be blindsided by. And we're going to talk about that coming up right here on the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey everybody, my name is Casey Graham. Let's hop right in. So let's talk about what artists don't want. Artists don't want record deals. Labels recognize these issues with artists. It simply stems from the fact that artists can record themselves, distribute their music, and promote themselves to an audience, okay? We, we all know this. If you're on my channel by now, you know this. However, labels know that artists want to be as big as they can be. The question is, what can the labels offer to artists and still be in the game with them? Well, they want label services. This is what artists want. And this is the big if right here. If labels are to be into the game, what is it that the artists don't have that they need? And if the artists find what they actually need, do they still need the labels? You see what I'm saying? Well, what artists want, however, which is the big if, are record label services. This is the full staff that can competently work their records and songs rather than their ragtag crew of friends that banded together to make something happen. Now, this is a temporary hire while the project is being released, but there are already independent label uh, level label services companies out here uh, to help. So how does the major record label intervene? So if I don't want the deal, I just need the services to pay. You all know if you need Spotify promotion and ads done, you can pay for those services. If you want to build your record label, you got me. If you need an operations manager, you got me as well. If you need styling services, you got that. The booking agents eventually come when you get hot enough. You know, the DJs will eventually spin your record as you do more promotion. So the question is, if the labels can't offer that, what are they going to do? Well, major labels have acquired companies to help. So now we're going to start getting dirty. Distributors that many artists now use are being acquired by the majors. Now, this process started in the early 2010s. But now, as we move deeper into the 20s or the 2020s, if you will, every distributor is attempting to boost their roster in the hopes of being acquired by a major company. Some of you all have been approached by some of these distributors. I mean, I'm just going to go on the record. I mean, me, me and and um, and brand man Sean, we already know we know who we, this distributor is. Now, having a major behind an indie distributor offers the smaller distributor access to the major system without the artist knowledge and offers smaller deals to artists without the branding on a major label. You get what I'm saying? Now this is this is going to happen first, okay? Now, the major label can finance these deals when the smaller distributor cannot and the label still gets to be in business behind the scenes. If they so choose, if they choose to step out in front, great. But at the end of the day, this new evil that I'm talking about is called an upstream deal. This is the new evil. The upstream deal is the new evil. It allows record labels to get in on the ground floor, listen to this now, with artists early, gaining access to data and financials to see which artists will be a good bet based on their digital A&R systems. Whereas labels have used outside data before, and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, to track artists, they will now have access to more inside data to catch artists even earlier in their rise to the top to offer artists a more fair deal, maybe under a new name, the distributor, that ultimately ends up back in the major system to prop up profits. Why? Because nobody wants record deals in the first freaking place, right? They don't. So let's dig in a little bit. I'm going to jump out of these slides real quick. All right. So I'm on Music Business Worldwide. DistroKid was the first to really launch a public service. But this one is a paid service where you pay to kind of get in a matchmaking type of thing with uh, DistroKid. And what DistroKid gets from the major record label is a small finder's fee to DistroKid when they sign someone, when the major label signs someone. So the major record labels have access to DistroKid's catalog and data to see who's actually doing well within their parameters and within their distribution system. 
Now, if I'm a record label, this isn't a bad competitive advantage to have over other record labels. I'm not mad at this particular system, right? Because now the artist doesn't necessarily have to sign up with, you know what I mean? With the, the record label, it's just, it's not an automatic opt-in, which makes it cool if you need the record label or if you want to upstream to the record label. Here's where it gets not so sexy. So I have a copy of an upstream agreement from Universal between a smaller distribution company. And essentially what th how this works is the company signs the artist and they do the distribution. They have an upstream threshold of anywhere from 25,000 units reported through SoundScan to 50,000 units reported through SoundScan. Dig this now. They have if the record company, Universal Music, does not decide to take on this project or doesn't take on this project after it reaches the threshold, the smaller distributor has to contact Universal and say, hey, you guys didn't upstream this album, you know what I mean, to, to take on the, the, um, this deal. And then after that, Universal has 30 days to actually uh, cure the breach, or if you will, of the contract. If they don't do it in 30 days, then they have an additional six months to do it. But by that six month period, this album is done if it hasn't gone viral. So the record company can say, this is a promissory note that if you hit 25 to 50,000 units in sales, then we may consider upstreaming you into the universal system. But let's talk about what they're gonna offer in terms of money. Let me go down to it. Um, for each furnishing agreement, so for albums two and three, so they'll take it up. They're probably not gonna pay the advance for the first because I didn't see anything for that. But for albums two and three, minimum 150,000, maximum 300,000. The advance goes directly to the artist. It doesn't go to the distribution company, so that's good. But they take administration rights. Universal takes administration rights. Um, exclusively and in perpetuity and they take a 50% ownership share and the distribution company gets the 50% ownership share in the master and Universal gets the other 50% share. The artist is left with nothing. They may have the royalty. I didn't see anything about the royalty in here. I'm quite sure it's in here, but this is on a quick glance. Um, but point is you're on uh, maybe I'll get signed to the record label in full. Maybe I won't get signed to the record label in full through this distributor. So it's kind of like laying down a record deal to say this is what the deal will be before we even know how big the song will get or to the extent of how big it will get. We don't even know if the same people will be or the same staff members will be at the record label. We don't know if we want to do the deal anymore because the artist is getting mixed feelings. This happens at the very beginning of the artist's career. This is the worst you can get, like versus an artist signing a demo recording deal, or it may be the equivalent of a demo recording deal like it was back in the day. It's just horrible. It's horrible. So you don't want to be in this position of actually having to sign something like this. Oh, um, this distribution company said I'm going to get signed to Universal and that's all they broadcast to you. I'm getting signed to, you know, I'm getting signed to Warner. I'm getting signed to Sony. I'm getting signed to Universal. They said we're going to do it and this is what they put in front of you. This is horrible. This is terrible because in 25,000 to 50,000 units right here, who knows what's going to happen? Who knows the infrastructure that you will have built? by that time and the decisions you'll made you have made as a team and you're you're exclusively signed on to universal music now because i haven't dug really too too heavy into this i'm assuming that if they don't sign you or upstream you within what is that seven months because you have the 30 days right here and then you have the six months right here on the street date if they don't sign you within seven months i'm assuming that you're good to go to be released but then why would you want to let your career played down instead of capitalizing on the career, right? Oh, we're doing good. Let's keep going. Well, if you keep going, you're going to go right into the hands of Universal. You don't have a choice. You see what I'm saying? And then you're locked in. You're locked in already to the advance down at the bottom. You see what I mean? Unless you come to the table renegotiating with a good lawyer. So this is the new evil man, and I don't like it. Now, how do you escape this? Find an independent distributor, call and ask if they have a deal with any major company or do your research to see if a major label is a shareholder in the distributor. Okay, so I gotta break out and show you this right here. Escaping it is kind of difficult, 
I don't know what services is going to happen with this, but check this out. Warner Music wants to acquire Believe Digital. And for the shareholders and stockholders of the company and the board members, I mean, this is, this is a good deal. I mean, as a business, as a business owner, why would you not want to do this? This is a good look. You can offer more revenue to the company. Cool. All right. But check it out. Sony has the orchard, right? And I believe they got AWOL. I'm not sure. Universal Music tried to do the same thing with um, with In Grooves, but they folded it into their artist and label division uh, version music group in 2022. But check this out. TuneCore. Why would Warner want to acquire Believe Digital? That's because TuneCore was acquired by Believe Digital. Where There we go. In 2015. And they have access, access to ton thousands, if not millions of artists in TuneCore. The same way that DistroKid is now giving an upstream situation to the major labels. You see what I'm saying? So you want to kind of find your way outside of this. Should we even care? In the grand scheme of things, you may see your distribution fees and qualifications change in the near future, but you shouldn't be affected too heavily by it. Just watch how many check boxes you click when signing up for your distributor of choice. Now, my distributor of choice, let me just say it, my distributor of choice is Symphonic because they are truly independent. Like, I, I'm not getting paid for this. I probably would have got paid for this if I, if I would have did my deal with them, but I never did because I really just like the service or whatever and I'm not doing sales videos for them. But Symphonic is my distributor of choice and they are truly independent. And if you want the best customer service and easy tools to use, I mean, they got everything over here, including music video distribution and a great sync company. Uh, I would choose Symphonic, okay? That's, that's the plug that I should have got paid for that I'm not, but I'm just being honest with you. Is an upstream deal good? Upstream deals, like I said, like you in for a long time and too early. I wouldn't do them simply because you don't know which way your career is going to move when you get started. You're also not a priority when you're pretty much uh, let me sign you and see how you perform kind of artist. Unless it's at a small distributor like we just talked about a minute ago. Now, don't expect special treatment with this kind of deal. It's like, hey, if they're a new distributor and they're small and they're not a major distributor, then they're going to be like, you know, hey, let's really go balls to the wall with this thing. If you are signing to a company like a distro kid or a tune core or whatnot, you're not going to get any special treatment. The record labels are going to come in and they're going to look for your data and see if you meet their thresholds and then try to get a deal going with you. Right. But man, back in the day before this deal even existed, people would put out their music, get it going and then go shop a deal. But again, as I was saying earlier in the video, if you know what you need in terms of label services, you don't need to go to a major label because a lot of times we have to we have to get into another segment on another video with this. But you have to decide to yourself and say, do I want the fame or is the reduced amount of fortune good enough for me? Do I want my cake and I want to eat it too? Because if I want the fame, go ahead and do the major deal. Why not? But if you just need the money that you're looking for, so you good, so maybe you can go and do something else with your life, don't get involved with this right here, okay? What I suggest for you to do is if you're an artist, a music producer, a new music exec, or just whatever, you wanna build your record and publishing company in 60 days or less without getting involved with these upstream type of deals and you wanna be totally independent, I got you covered because it's gonna allow you to step around all of that misinformation out there and get it done all in one place. Yes, you will have a strong LLC foundation to build upon and this will last you for quite some time when you're doing business with it. You'll learn how to play the game via contract so you're not screwed out here and you'll be set up to collect domestic and international publishing royalties without the middleman taking 15%, all right? All the stuff in the bottom right-hand corner is covered within this course plus much, much more. But if this is your first time watching the channel, grab the free stuff below 10 major steps to increase your record labels profits a free split sheet is included with the download please do those split sheets now avoiding these deals allows you to grow in your career without pressure because if you have an independent who signs you and says yeah we got a deal with universal we have a distribution deal with universal they're going to tell you a distribution they're not going to tell you an upstream deal because if they say upstream you're going to say what is upstream but if they say distribution you can be like oh that sounds good i've been hearing about distribution for years right no that's the kind of pressure you're going to feel oh this is a distribution deal let's get it signed let's get it because they need money 
They want to get your stuff upstream so they can get heavier into the system. But if you avoid these deals, like this is healthy for you as an artist, just in case things get too big and you need to bow out or you want to expand how you want to. OK, but taking on this deal is more than likely not going to pan out the way you wanted it to. Why? Because it's still a bet that the labels are taking on you. It's just that they can make that bet on a cheaper entry fee by having the first option to put you in a standard deal versus other companies. So it's going to be an upstream deal. The label isn't going to be the label of your choice, more than likely. Then you're going to get hit with a 360 deal because you're still early and then you're back in the system that you were trying to stay independent of from the jump. Maybe if you weren't looking for all the fame and all the fortune. I'm just saying this deal is out here. So you need to be careful on what's being offered to you. All right. I'm saying avoid these deals. So if staying out of the arms of the major labels was your goal from the get go, then now you have a little bit more knowledge about what's happening out here right now so that you can escape those arms. Music Money Makers, if you make music, you should always make money. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com, jump into the 60 day record label course, book a call on musicmoneymakeover.com, download the free stuff there, and I'll see you next time. Peace.